had to, I had to literally move everything and put in the Ghana must go and take his hand luggage. I even put my, I even put my story about him as, as I'm, I'm becoming one of those uncles carrying animals goes to London. <laughs> Currently, the 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 naira conversion uh, to to dollars is between that like seven hundred to eight hundred dollar right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so eight hundred naira to the dollar. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your take about that? Yeah, I mean, even said the pound is eight hundred to. Uh, I mean, my take about that is like at the end of the day, find other ways. Just find a way to get foreign income. No, no, no. Because like the state of the, the state of economy is, is actually severe. It's a severe situation right now. Like people are not even thinking about it. Like we're just dying and going forward. It's not a joke. Um, that's an understatement, hundred percent. Because I know people that are like what some people would consider well to do, and they've got children abroad that mm. they're paying school fees in, and they've yeah. said that if it gets to any higher, that's them done. Mm. That like they just can't afford to send that's money good, back. Yeah. And this is, this is like just below middle class, or just this is like upper middle class or upper class of mm. society. Um, saying this. Now, yeah, it, it's, it's a big problem because we import so many things. Um, we almost have a supply gap in all of our agriculture as mm. well. So there is a big problem um, for that because it's going to keep fueling the inflation that we already have. We mm. average like 15, 16% monthly inflation. So yeah, it's a problem. And I just think right now the world itself is, is facing recessionary pressure mm. in the states in europe there's just one everywhere yeah right now, right it's now, about yeah. to we're just even about to start mm. hitting there so the only th thing i can think about is as an individual all you have to think about is arming yourself against the economy of the yeah, world yeah but it's, it's just like so so i mean this this heavy dependent of on importation in nigeria do you think like someone's making money in the back of it why that, that way or do you think there's better things that we could do to make sure we're less important no i don't think it's that simple i i think um i think okay so if you if you take agriculture for example mm. like so i've recently been reading a lot on palm oil right okay so yeah, yeah. i think it's in 1969 palm nigeria was the largest producer of palm oil in the world we mm. had 43 percent of the world's share today 43 percent. yeah we That's were the largest mad. producer back then now we're fifth Malaysia and Indonesia account for eighty four percent. You know a fact because I remember trying to import uh, palm oil one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody was asking like for some quotes. Exactly, mm. what went wrong? Um, oil came in the picture. So when you look at Nigeria's story, so even Nigeria as a whole, let's even take a step back. Forget the palm oil mm. for a second. Nigeria had a current account surplus, right? Mm. We were, we were, we were, we had that for many years. What has brought us to this country to the state we are today is something very simple. When oil came in, we abandoned everything else. Facts. And so that made a lot of people mm. rush to um, those places, the urban centers, Lagos, PH, whatever. And it made us abandon a lot of the industries, the cash crops that we would, mm. you know. And it, it got so bad that what we, what, how we created a surplus, we could meet local demand and export and earn foreign currency. Nah. Now on almost all of them, if not I everything, we are, have a supply gap. Mm. So we are not even meeting local demand, let alone being able to. So that is more, uh, um, that's a problem. Mm. And I, that's why I say, if you really want to look, this is just my opinion. I don't know if I'm right or not. The way I look at it now is like, with this thing that's going on in the economy right now, we're mm. going to be forced to look inwards. And so local producers stand to benefit um, from the recession that's yeah, coming, coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's interesting so i mean please god i i really hope that one day we wake up from this stuff right we're to the point that we see our value and then we start bringing that to the world um in terms of like manufacturing in terms of um, so important. producing food not just food but, but it's, good it's complex well. because for example storage is an issue Right. Yeah. You know, so storage is one aspect of it. Some agricultural, some products need cold storage as mm. well. We've got energy problems. Second thing is distribution, mm -hmm. logistics to distribute outside of um, states, 
let alone to other African countries. Yeah, yeah, That's difficult sometimes as well. So yeah, there's many kind of like issues that need to um, be solved. Be solved yeah. But by force, uh, you have to just look, we have to start looking at local production. And also, um, you know, like same thing with oil, there's like upstream, down, midstream, downstream. Yeah. yeah. So we need to really kind of focus a lot more on the downstream as of well. Agriculture. Of agriculture. So that's like distribution and all this kind um, of stuff. And process, right? actually Processing. packaging, process, exactly what that, mm. that side of it will help us add value and earn foreign. Mm. I just think we need to learn how individuals mm. and the country needs to be focused now on earning foreign so let, exchange. Let's look, at, let's look at Ghana, for example. I think yeah. Ghana is doing well when it comes to stuff like that with the cocoa stuff. Yeah. Uh, the drink stuff as well. And all that thing. Is that, yeah. is that something that you've seen before? Yeah. So the difference, um, what Ghana has over us is like yeah better planning better management of um of what they're doing better mm. sanitary standards as well and, and agriculture takes time too mm. for example with palm oil um yeah, if cute. you plant it's four years before you can harvest mm. and there's certain things that you need to take account for how far will you plant the seeds you know weather conditions even mm. the quality of the seeds somebody shout out to someone that commented on the news video the other day they literally were like the problem we have on the news that week was a lot of gmo seeds were coming into africa and the person commented like this doesn't sound like good news you know what i mean so there's there all these factors come into play with yes. with the produce so they are thinking ahead so one thing that we know about mm. nigerians is we do not think ahead time, the yeah. average nigerian is programmed to think short term yeah. and it's only those of us that were in abroad for extended periods of time we were kind of got trained against that mentality yeah. to start thinking a bit further along down the line so ghana definitely has um, and not just ghana like many other uh, uh, countries as well uh, are doing it better than us in that area mm. uh, but it's sad I mean honestly it's going to plunge even more people millions more people into poverty mm. um, right now no that's I'm, I'm just thinking okay like in the future right like I, I always imagine that with one day that enough is going to be enough where we would kind of think about what we've done to ourselves as a country <laughs> and <laughs> and really all stand up right at the same time so hopefully that's sooner than later because it's... Uh, Do you really think that's going to happen, Nigeria? I think it would happen. After the end stars, two days of, of partying and... No, no, and, I think it would happen. Of... Look, right, life is all about forces. And if you push one way for too long, yeah, you would always get something coming back the other way. Yeah, and you you think that what comes back another way could be like a sustained effort to cause change. Because that's the real thing, mm. right? That's my point. It's like... The camel, something always breaks the camel's back in Nigeria. There's mm. no denying that. It doesn't ever break it to affect the change that's needed. Mm -hmm. It's always BAU after like mm. a week or two. That's why I'm more concerned about, you mm. know. And uh, when we keep electing, you know, old babas into government, the, do you know what? Yeah, mm. sorry. Again, I'm always reading like lots of metrics and things sure, like that. Sure, so yeah, I'm always talking about how the median age in Nigeria is like 19, 19, 19 yeah. but that's not even what got me. Only ten percent of the population is over sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're letting one population. one yeah. tenth of these of the country, yeah, run the rest. rest of the ninety. Yeah. No, 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 no. So. So yeah, I I get that point, right? All, all of that is there, but let's let's look at kind of objectively speaking, right? What what would it really take for things to be different, right? We need better leaders, like just as as individuals, you understand, like ourselves, how we how we think. And I feel this whole generation of like technology uh, based leadership, mm -hmm, like all these guys mm -hmm. are creating tech products. So, yeah. Um, people sourcing different funding from different areas, yeah. right? I feel like they they're getting to the point where they're becoming as much as they rely on government and they want to make sure government to do stuff. Mm -hmm. People are becoming independent and, okay. and forming their own tribe and leadership styles through the, through like what they learn online or where and elsewhere. And I feel we've filtered down slowly, right? For example, the Nigerian startup bill just recently got passed. Without much information about what the bill's going to do. Yeah. We've all been looking for what what does it mean? Exactly. It's got some certain points like, obviously, reducing tax rates in certain areas at the beginning stages. Uh, all this micro-incentive. I call it micro-incentive. I like not, that term. I love really, that. Micro-incentive. Yeah, they're not really like going to make any significant shift, I right? like that, yeah. But it's still something it shows okay look right they've they seen the opportunity with these young young uh, startup business in these areas uh, let's try and get those things moving forward um 
and other countries are following suit as well, mm-hmm. introducing new policies. I mean, you say that, but I was at Lagos Startup Week this week. Mm. Again, shout out to Prime Startups for putting that shout together. To um, and that's the one thing, again, about Lagos that's very good. There's always like uh, a week, Lagos Burger Week, Lagos mm. Startup Week, Lagos Fintech Week. So going every on. single week, yeah, there's yeah. something going on. So this week was Lagos Startup Week. And uh, the day I went on was the Fintech Day. And they were talking about, you know, they just banned virtual cards or something like that. And that kind of had to affect. Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah. Because now yeah. you can't even buy anything in dollars. So, so that's the that's the main. So having better leaders and the tech coming down, like I get that. I get that part and that's fine. But the truth of the matter is if there's still the main government can just wake up and just kind of disrupt somebody's mm. kind of line of business, then that's still a problem. So there that's needs problem, to be, yeah. there needs to be better cohesion in general and mm. they need to stop waking up one day and coming out with these like, you know, laws and things that yeah, they want to do. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm i always very kind of, the only time in my life I'm defeatist is when it comes to government. I just like to tell people to just not even focus on that. And yeah, just focus just on, can be around the, yeah, just focus on sector. what you can do in the private sector. Yeah, yeah. That's me. We do need some people to fight for the change, but mm. I can't be using my brain, my the finite energy I have to no, think about it's, that. It's, it's, it's a difficult terrain to, to navigate. Um, you have to kind of be in it to, to understand it. So. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to learn now guys you have to start learning okay cool how to get money out of um dollars some people if you have the skills learn how to trade okay Mm. learn some instruments that you can invest in start looking at how to beat inflation inflation is Mm. something that eats away at your money not just devaluation of currency Mm. so you need to kind of look at historical inflation rates and understand that I'm waking up poorer every month by 15% Mm -hmm. and compounded by the exchange rate. Mm. And that's happened globally, okay? It's only in the West that try to fight inflation, keep it at 2%, but it's a factor. So you have to really start thinking about that because when I was in the UK, what Mm. changed the game for me? There's a pension calculator that you can do. I was about to check on something recently. Yeah, so I did a pension calculator when I was like 20. Mm. And it was like, if I want to live off 60,000 pounds a month, yeah, 60,000 pounds a year, Mm. a year throughout retirement, retirement yeah um i need to have saved up by the time you retirement age is like just under 60 in the uk i'll need to have saved up 2.2 million pounds after adjusting for inflation to be able to just survive off 60k a year Gary, that's wild when this, I is saw- why, this is why people are going broker every day after a certain point in their in the life in the uk because you've realized that Inflation is chopping into you. Everything is chopping into your life. And you be thinking, okay, I've got a pension. No, no, no. It's not Yeah, stretching. they don't realize it in time. It's not stretching. So even now, sometimes I have some uncles and auntie, uncles used to reach out to me, like, mm. especially during lockdown, like, where can I invest my money? Obviously, I'm coming to retirement. Like, you know what to do. And I'll, um, I'm always on these forums. And there was one I was reading on yesterday on Reddit. It was like, what's one thing you wish people told you? Now that you're like older, like older, what's the one best advice? You can be mm. a younger person. And like the third comment was like, thinking about retirement earlier because inflation the money the real money in today's terms are one point something million by the time you accounted for inflation it was 2.2 million just to survive for 60k a year Mm. so yeah this is why you know what yeah this is why moving back and doing all this thing is good you know because if you think about it even if i mean some people's dream in other countries with black people to retire in africa yeah so if yeah. you're already setting up your your situation here, yeah, yeah, then it makes it a little bit easier. Hundred percent. Understand. So there's there's benefits in a lot of things that even I thought about. It, I was like, listen, like I know I know a lot of issue. If you go and ask them, a lot of African uncles in in UK, if you ask them, listen, how are you feeling? Uh, what do you think about retirement? They're like, listen, my God, I wish I could just have a little small shop in one African country right yeah. now, I'm just gonna chill. Yeah but they can't set that up because of so many things holding them back. Mm-hmm. So you need to understand that there's a reason why moving back is the other benefits rather than just 100%. the short term of what you're thinking. You understand? It's like, yeah. we'll sow some seeds just in case for certain things. That, like that, yeah, sow some seeds. Yeah. yeah in, in areas, and, and then let them grow and then keep watching them, watch them over for a mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm. But no, there's, there's huge benefit as well. And I, and I feel like in overall, when I feel like that decision of being in Nigeria, I feel like there's, benefit that outweigh just the way we're looking at it right now that we're not thinking about like the health side of things as well even if just taking good food right yeah, choosing yeah. what to eat knowing where your food's coming from yeah yeah do you know that like UK you don't really know where our food is coming from that's what they put horse feet in Tesco 
that's why you man were eating horse meat instead of beef. <laughs> that, when I saw that, that on TV, yeah, that's what I mean, that is <laughs> And also, even when you do, those places that Africans buy meat, those abattoirs that are run by like Arab people oh. and the in them place, that's where you, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Look, I get myself organically from the farm, Cheap delivered food. to my door. They just delivered a new, fresh, 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 fresh produce fresh. from yeah. the farm, farm to table. That's how I get my stuff now. I mean, like, yeah, I agree with you. There's a lot more benefits um, than what you come and the one big thing as well is you doesn't have to be Nigeria. Mm. Obviously, Nigeria was easy because there was no visa issues yeah, and yeah, stuff. Sure, but sure. It, it could be another at, African country. Yeah, look yeah. About, guys, you really need to keep up to date with what countries like Rwanda are doing. I'm telling you, even doing Gabon is clean. doing a lot. People don't even know about all these kind we of countries. Start, yeah, yeah. We, we need to start. We That's, need to all these other countries, you know. Yeah, like, we need to start going to. We're gonna start um, Ghana. Go to South Africa. Coming to meet to entrepreneurs Tanzania, and those places. Yeah, Zimbabwe we're gonna start. Is calling me. Yeah, I've got friends in Zimbabwe. Yeah, shout Kenya's to Zimbabwe, shouting, man. Right, Kenya mm-hmm. shouting silently. Oh, Kenya is uh, Kenya slowly becoming top. Before I'm I was like, mm, now Kenya, yeah, that's the Niger of East Africa. Yeah, then man, I just met. I, I had a conversation with a guy recently. And he just came from, and today. Actually, this morning, mm-hmm. he just came from Kenya. He said about he said Kenya is doing well, but Nigeria is like Kenya on crack. Yeah, it's like Kenya on crack. That's what exactly. he said. It's like, it's yeah, like, it, it, it's crazy here. Yeah, it's like everyone has like multiple businesses. Is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So everyone's like much more like entrepreneurial and mm. hungry for this. So I said like. Establishing your route here gives you the strength for any other African country. Mm, Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Gives you that, that ability. For the to... entire world, look, God forbid, yeah, if I couldn't be in Nigeria for whatever reason or things didn't work out and I went to the States after, mm. I'd be a beast. Mm. And absolute, when it comes to business, yeah, when it comes to innovation, innovation yeah. structure, security, because this place teaches you to be like on top of everything. Yeah, we, in, That's when I just go everywhere, anywhere country and just climb up quickly. Mm. Because this environment has taught you how to be dogged in like yeah, yeah. every aspect of every business. Aspect, yeah. So regardless, like um, I call this place a military camp. And yeah. that's why I feel like I'm in right now. I feel like I'm mm. in a military camp. And I think once you graduate out of it, you're w- very like armed and ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm To ready. deal yeah, with the world. I like that. I like that. Yeah. No, that's sick though. So, so right now, yeah. How it's been a couple of a year and a couple of months in. Yeah. How are you now feeling in Nigeria? So I'm not in a good place right now. I'll be mm. very honest. I'm a very real person, open person. I'm at a crossroads right now mm. because I have learned so many things. Mm-hmm. And I'm at the point where I'm trying to like assimilate everything I've learned mm. and then decide how to like go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not at the best place. I think the best place is always when you first come. Because when you first come, so yeah, is new, isn't it? you're just, you know, <laughs> yeah, new, yeah, you're having a great time. But then, the, but then the way I look at it also is I have not actually ever accepted that I live in Nigeria. And that's why I'm not in the best place right mm. now, because I'm actually accepting that, yo, I have actually moved here. It's finally settled in that I've moved here. So I need to move like I move here. Mm. So right now I want to reconcile like my UK life where I had absolute freedom, everything I needed, I had. I'm trying to just create that here now. Mm. Then I can feel a bit better Three, yeah, that's yeah. me i don't know yeah, about you sure. yeah. no, 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 I, I get it i mean for me i'm i'm one of the kind of person where i adapt to things very quickly yeah irrespective of the environment and I, i'm also very aware of that so it's sometimes a good thing is a bad thing because yeah i could be in a bad environment i'll adapt to it so quickly yeah I be, so i always make sure i put myself in good environments right so because of that i feel like i'm i'm slowly adapting to nigeria mm. um I, I would say like yeah some days are like ugh, like i'm just fed up with this stuff right? i'm, I'm always yeah. thinking okay cool but most times it's not even it's not even a personal thing. It's more like, ah, oh, is this currency gonna keep going down? Kind of thing. Oh, okay, that's like, what you're thinking that, about. That one yeah. Is like another thing is like, um, ah, oh, like what happens in the healthcare sit- health situation that that gets severe X Y Z right. Mm. Another time I'm thinking, okay, is the government gonna introduce something new that's gonna just mess up things? It's always there's always just that mm. that uncertainty on on the, from the, on the business side of things. That's that's a bit. Okay, that, that can, but yeah. living life every day, food, meaning, I, yeah, I don't, I'm the same as you. I'm, I've, I've sorted that out. Like living situation, I've sorted all that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But just the whole, it's work dynamism. It's the work of, of the side. Business side yeah, of things. It's, it's the business it's kind of, it's side. It's a bit. You get there's a business anxiety. I, I feel that's what I've. That's exactly yeah. it. Business anxiety, business anxiety is yeah. what has caused me to mellow and humble down a bit yeah. and be like, mm, okay, because the, the, the yeah. environment is so dynamic as well. So, so yeah. obviously. Knowing that it's also prepared you mentally because obviously, you know, like in London, like there's not really key business anxiety in London. You know why? Because it's if if there's a process, there's a blueprint, there's a process. If you just follow that process, London is too easy to be. I swear, I swear, when I come back to London to start a business, <laughs> it's not even going to take long. 
London is the most easiest place to start. Business. I'm telling you, it's just expensive to start one. It's just expensive that's to only start, thing. Yeah. Bam, the yeah. document, the bureaucracy, the yeah. staff, even it's the processes. Yeah. That's the only thing about London. But once you've started oh. and, and, and the money's coming, it just comes. So I kind of get it why it's like that. Yeah, the barrier to entry is high, but it's like once you're in, you're in. But I drew a barrier to entry to business is low, like registration staff, all this kind of. It's still a bit. Low. I have a school of thought that I've whilst I'm reconciling like my entire experience, I've come to the conclusion. I don't know if you agree with me. Mm. There's a bit of naivety to just move to a random country, start a business, and think everything is just going to be like hunky dory. Yeah, there's definitely huge naivety in that. But I also say that's also a good way to do it. You know why? Yeah. Because like, you would learn firsthand. Oh yeah. Do you understand? Because what not everything you do in the papers is true. Yeah. Not everything you do on the research is true. Facts. You understand? Like, yeah, okay, listen, right now, people on oh, Nigeria has 200 million people and you want to introduce a product. These people are so diversified. They're like different categories of people, different way of thinking, different age groups, different age groups, economic right? Backgrounds. Um, different yeah, backgrounds, yeah. different, yeah. different spending power. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not, what you read online is not really true. You have to kind of go and really experience these things. Um, facts, yeah. So I feel sometimes taking a blind approach, but also, being aware that you're taking a blind approach don't be stupid don't be naive yes, yeah, you can't, yeah i'm taking a blind approach that means a lot more risk is involved so if i'm taking a prepared. blind approach that means i need to find the network of local nigerians that can ease me in mm. i need to um like actually do market research directly with who my consumers would be etc mm. i need to secure contracts before i invest too heavily in the exactly, thing yeah. that's what the diaspora needs to do moving back otherwise you're going head first into so many things i just had a moment of deja vu by the way okay. but um yeah like you're gonna go you're gonna keep uh clashing but yeah, yeah. it's amazing no matter what you're gonna become beast you're gonna become like a beast in a good way so, beastie yeah beastie. beast mode beastie yeah. situation let's 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 we'll go back to our little okay um, question let's see stuff. let's see what's in there I haven't picked we haven't picked one in a while, you know. And I'm just thinking I hope there's a good I want to pick some interesting ones. Because yeah. I haven't I haven't I haven't read one in a while. Let me I see hope this one. That's a good one. Mm. Let's ask one quickly. How many times should I visit before moving back? <laughs> what would you say? There's a new interview that's on the blog, by the way. Guys, check it out. Um from Noreen. She's a diaspora that moved to Kenya and has her consulting business. Okay. So she wrote advice and 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 I think she was right. She goes is she knew that it was not wise to move back all at once. There's <laughs> only people like me, a doctor, that would be doing that. <laughs> so she said, you have to stage the moving back. She wrote it in detail. She had to clear it. So check it out. She she was like, yeah, you have to kind of stage it over time. Over time, yeah. Yeah. I would even give yourself a year. A year. If you're coming back every two months, I would give yourself a year. If you're coming back less frequently, I would take mm. even longer than that. Because you need to, the smoother transition is the best. Facts, facts. Yeah. You don't want a hard transition. You don't learn the most. We yeah. we will learn the most in our experience because of the way we've done it. Mm. We're gonna learn more than anybody, but we wouldn't have. We're gonna also have to walk on fire a lot more. Yeah, you're gonna walk on fire. Yeah, yeah so yeah, but that's, it's that's, not yeah. ideal for everybody. Not everybody has the ability to kind of do that. And I think because we moved when we were younger, it's also helping us. It's, if it's, you're moving at 30, 34, 35, maybe you got one U or something. You can't mm. be out here. So so then the another one to follow up on that one is like, how much money should I have? Should uh, should I move back to Lagos? Okay, with? that's a good question. Let's talk like about that one. one. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah. This, this, okay, for me, right? What, what did I do? I I had two years of expenses saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So I was talking about what was going to cost me to live for two years, mm -hmm. and I haven't been in Lagos for two up to two years. I think I about I have like six more months for my two year mark yeah. weeks, right? So with that, but in 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 business, no, they said have eight months of expenses saved, yeah. and then. And then just kind of run the business. But that's if you're living in London and you have like, <laughs> is it, there's a more structured surer, environment. Structured environment. <laughs> but if you're moving to somewhere like, like anywhere in Africa, but especially Lagos, then it's yeah. like, you never know what's going to happen any day. You definitely need a couple of, a lot of savings. Just do that, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. two years of expenses is good. Now, um, so everybody, that's different, right? Obviously, some people are more expensive, some people are, are mm. more, uh, more conservative and how much you spend or mm -hmm. a bit more. Uh, linear so you need to think about all of those things involved and just understand okay mm -hmm. here's the amount of money uh, to save just know that it depends on also where you're living in Lagos or some people live in the in the expensive areas and live in the cheaper areas mm -hmm, some people mm -hmm. live in the middle right mm -hmm. so when I moved I didn't choose very expensive I didn't mm -hmm. choose that bad I just mm -hmm. kind of chose somewhere a little bit in the middle mm -hmm. so which is calm yeah um, yeah you got you got to be smart about it as well so yeah um, the way I would approach the question is like I would tick things off. So, for example, 
first things first is housing, mm. right? So Nigeria, we pay rent monthly, um, outright, sorry, we pay rent outright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you pay the full 12 months or you're buying. So first mm. of all, have you sorted that out? Second thing, vehicle, mm. okay? So the, all these you have to tally up on an Excel spreadsheet and really tally up. So the second thing is the vehicle. I would advise to drive a four by four in mm. in, in uh, most times. So, or you know, Doctor Ashley has a good rule: two of everything. <laughs> have two, you <laughs> have know, two everything, have yeah. two vehicles. But ideally, okay, so you just get one vehicle. Have you sorted that out? Have you added that to your cost? Okay, cool. The third and most important thing, yeah, which I don't want anyone else to Go do, ahead. is the cash flow. Okay. Have you thought about? Are you coming here to just start the business straight? Are you coming here? Have you got a job from abroad that you're gonna work in while you're in business? Mm. I. Bed and beg and plead with you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have cash sort flow, out the cash flow before you land. Don't disrupt your income. Mm. So until you have cash, the cash flow could be local, it could be international, it could be anything. That's the third and most important thing. Once you've got those three sorted out, the amount of money you move back with, yeah, it can be six months of savings, one year of savings. It's kind of insignificant. Mm. Um, but that's the way I would uh, approach yeah, it. Yeah, you need saving money, man. Money that you know that's going to come every month, irrespective of your business. But exactly. You know I mean? That is the most important save thing. Save money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> unexpected expenses will hit you mm. out of anywhere and you don't want to be choking, you know. I've got a question here. Like how do you how do you change money like naira to dollar? Or Ooh, um, yeah. we're gonna have we're gonna have the company uh, a company come on actually very soon about that. But um, right now black market really black market rates. I've been doing black market messaging people around. Have you got Please. someone that changes C money? C CBM, I, I wasn't in this conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's that it's every that's the only way you can do it. It's literally um black market. Although there's apps coming up, so mm. shout out to Lemonade Finance. Um, Shout out to Lemonade. They're coming on soon, uh, but yeah, they they're a good way to uh, a, a good trusted uh, fintech to okay, use. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. What is one thing you wish you knew? <laughs> Man's going through the whole bar. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going through really this. I'm saying some really interesting questions. I'm yeah. down. I'm down. We need to get new questions coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Guys, please I'll send, check the blog. Check send it. Send your in. goddamn questions. The links in, is on. The link is on there. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm move backers. Send your, <laughs> send your goddamn questions in. <laughs> Okay, would you advise someone to move back and get a job <laughs> instead of starting a business? Hmm. Okay. Getting paid in Nigeria is shit, man. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine going for a job and they tell you they're going to give you like 300k a month. Fam, I've been having some conversations. <laughs> hey, boy. Like, no ratings, fam. Go to where you're valued, boy. Go where you're treated best. That's my number one line. Go I where think it, I think best. we just answered it just now. Have your cash flow coming in mm. and then any business is supplementary to your cash flow. If you don't look at it that way, you're going to bring headache to your mm, life. Don't, is don't that, it, that's the best way to look at it. You don't, you don't headache, man. Yeah. Um, oh, this is good. Would you have moved back if you were in a relationship? Oh, interesting question. Um, would I be back in a relationship? Oh. <laughs> I want to talk about this. Guys. Wait, let's actually let's go down for, That's a bit loaded. Let me it's think loaded, about it. it. If I'm in a relationship in London, London, yeah. So you got a man in London, basically. Oh, that's because. Oh, that's a good question. You it's know, question. you know what? I, let me, I need to go you first. answer it. Yeah, so I was in a relationship before I moved back, <laughs> but the relationship hits shallow waters. <laughs> so anyways so because of the, the situation that does, that's not what made me move back yeah <laughs> but <laughs> but you know what i'm saying but i just i even i even invited the person to say listen do you want to come and figure out okay cool over here? okay cool yeah and then my boy told me listen i wouldn't be blue i'm not coming with you <laughs> I, you know I, I know you have your shit together you invite someone to come and join you on the same boat <laughs> <laughs> so I was kidding to scream about her. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. So I get it. I get it. So mm -hmm. like, but everybody's different. Some people are in different stages in the relationship. So mm. some people have figured shit out. They've saved together. They've got their stuff and they're thinking about this is the next move as a partner. That's different. But if you're just a London relationship, like we used to have London relationships, it's not London, really. Like, yeah, because uh, some of my London girls that like, came dirty December, some of them were in relationships, but they wanted to be free from their man, boy. I'm not, I'm not cutting anyone up, but they, <laughs> them girls wanted Lagos to be, because Lagos <laughs> men, were, they, they got their vultures. Some of them were like, mm, yeah, I'm not trying to be out here with my man like that. And I'm like, oh, I swear. Yeah. So, I mean, would I be back in a relationship? 
I'm not going to let a, a relationship hold me in London. I'm just trying to see. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I'm going to be like, look. <laughs> you tell me, you tell me about, like, nah. no, this, is what, this is what I'm doing. I don't know what I don't know about you. I go, we can figure it out. But this is what I'm doing. Because it's, the reason why I'm struggling to answer the question is because of how I moved. It was lockdown. Hmm. It was lockdown and the UK were on a, doing being bipolar about lockdown. And I just said, that's it. I've had enough. Like, I'm out, right? So... Yeah, I would have still done that if I was a relationship. So, so Kenya, let's talk about a little bit about Kenya because I know that the startup community in Kenya is becoming huge. Oh yeah, the second right. to Nigeria, yeah, yeah. So, do you feel like Kenya is more accommodating to foreigners than Nigeria? Yeah, because even there was a problem in Kenya where they said a lot of the startups raising were not even Kenyans. It was white people or like French. When I say white, like French and all these mm. kind of people. So that was that was a, that was an issue that was going on when they dissected the mm. the raise. Um, but Kenya has uh, better infrastructure than us. Uh, better infrastructure. I mean, look, I have not been to Kenya. I'm just right. saying of my studies and things. So they've got better infrastructure, better uh, in terms of like energy, internet. I think they're the most connected yeah, country yeah, yeah. on the, the, con on the continent world, yeah. on the continent and they actually have like wealthy clean neighborhoods mm. and we don't have a single one in the whole of Lagos whatsoever mm. we only have one or two estates that are nice we don't have a neighborhood that's nice um but again that's where my knowledge stops okay. so I would have to go and really investigate to see yeah, the difference. So I, I sent you something recently. I won't talk about it recently. I'm gonna oh, try and the, find um, this nomad list, list. the nomad list. Yeah, let me yeah. just check that quickly. So basically, right, I went on this website called Nomad List. It was funded by this guy. Yeah. And um, nomadlist.com. And what they looked at is like different. So it's like people who go and do find remote work in different places. Okay. And then they choose the best place to live. So I just chose Africa. Like, where do people normally, where are these nomadists? Nomadists, yeah. where? They, where go and find that remote work they, or they have remote work in different countries but live in other places yeah so where did they go to most in africa right yeah so johannesburg came as number one and he said that the average kind of monthly um uh, rent is about a thousand five hundred and thirty three dollars a month yeah and cape town was number two mm -hmm. another place called uh tagzu or uh, tagazu yeah uh, in morocco and then you have got Nairobi, Kenya, yeah, as number four. So then you got Marrakesh, number five, yeah, and then you have got Lagos, number six. So why didn't we explore these other areas before we decided to choose Lagos? Because of um, visa. Oh yeah, true. We are not. We're not expats here. We're in our country. We have a Nigerian passport. Any mm. of these other countries, you, there's. I'm assuming there's some kind of work permit or something that's needed. Yeah. So that's why. Um. Yeah. So I'm trying to set, I'm, once I've mastered Lagos, then I can start looking at other countries that are better because Lagos is not feeling, sustainable. I have a feeling we'll do very well in Cape Town, you know. Oh, yes. That essay, essay, you guys will see me soon. Yeah, yeah. Even, <laughs> at, even, even, even has ratings. Cape Town has ratings. So basically, other, other places here, yeah. it has the star rating. Yeah. Yeah. It has the cost of living. Mm -hmm. It has Wi-Fi. It mm -hmm. has the speed of Wi-Fi and it yeah. has the level of fun. In Cape Town, level yeah, of fun. Every, everything is up, 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 except for Wi Fi. If Wi Fi is the biggest problem, yeah, I'm trying to be MTN. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, no. let me see. Look, look, look at Nigeria, Lagos, you. Nigeria. Yeah, is it accurate? All is their costs are very high, yeah, so right. we're living in one of the most expensive, yeah, we never that, especially on the island, too. yeah, yeah. On the island, one of the most expensive areas Facts. in Africa, yeah, we are. Wi Fi is a little bit low, right? Yeah, but fun is like medium. Yeah. So if this is medium fun, imagine what it's fun. Who did this list, fam? They think Lagos white, fun is medium. Probably white people with it. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't think Lagos fun is medium, fam. Lagos fun is not medium, I, I, right? I, in fact, I'll be surprised if anybody can beat Lagos fun. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, the music is ours. Maybe because obviously we have a taste for it. The lagoon is as in the lagoon is there. Mm. I mean, and so I would on that fun part. Well, I'll investigate it. I'll I feel like when we when we have a lot more, I'm saying. Uh, uh, money to move around with we would definitely find so that Cape Town a bit more fun than Lagos yeah yeah just cover quality of people that you meet as well that, that's, that's what I was because I reckon, I reckon there's definitely more like entrepreneurs who are uh, especially African Americans I've seen yeah. a few African Americans move to, uh, to one, that side there's literally one time I got on a Zoom call one my, my man from London he, was, he, he had a London startup the guy was in the middle of Cape Town his view was crazy them man yeah the LA homes that I adore 
get that in Cape Town. In fact, the background of my LinkedIn photo is a Cape Town, is a Cape Town infinity pool looking at the mountain. That's actually a good, I had to put it there. So yeah, every time I see it, I see it behind me. Like yeah, the yeah, goal, yeah, yeah, yeah. See the goal, you know I literally saying? see the guys and yeah, 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 so, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, only in, the, only, in the, only in the, only in the apartment in Cape Town would be, I don't know, it's, 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 hundred percent. We're in near term, not even mm-hmm. like far, far away. We need to start investigating just the prices because boy, it's, yeah, it's well, we're going to come, we're going to the... come. The podcast is going to move outside of Lagos soon. Speak yeah. to other entrepreneurs, hear other people's stories as well. Yeah. Build the network. We're a Pan-African network. We Pan-African. have a WhatsApp group of people that have moved back to Africa. Sure. So we're, we've, we're in the group and as well. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be connecting because I think now we've got the agreement. We've got the African Union. You mm-hmm. can move around as well a lot easier. So we have to start Shout looking at... the free trade agreement. Yeah, though. the free trade agreement mm-hmm. um, for countries that manufacture. It's great. Yeah, it's have good, good stuff, logistics. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited. Like I mm. say, like I'm so excited. I've still never for once regretted moving back. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of very excited for Africa. That's yeah. good. That's good. So yeah. anyways, wrap it up today. Thank to wrap you. it up, I hope I just wish we had better airlines like luxury planes, but Ooh. that's just besides the way. Sorry, I just had to add that in there because some of these planes be dingy as anything. But yeah, really. have you ever got on a plane in Nigeria? I think that plane is literally seconds from crashing. Oh, hundred percent. That's why I stopped flying domestic flights. <laughs> I stopped. To me, that I was going to Ondo up and down. Anyhow, I had to chill. If it's not by road, I'm not going. So this is the thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing you know that, that. You shit. know that literally, like the people hmm. just just. The P- PJs and just move around. No, no, that's the goal. Because those flights are so dingy, they're, and like they're dingy, it... they stink. The width. This table is is wider than the width of the row. The turbulence is the bouncy, tur- bouncy. No amenity. No, no, nothing. You no, know it reminded me one time when I fl- I flew Fly B between London and and uh, Edinburgh. <laughs> that day I said I've never seen the aircraft so small in my life. <laughs> You know what it felt like? You know those those movies where there's like the wind, those those planes that land in water. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're just about to just like close Man. the door like this. I at least it was one company planes? that they were sent me to Edinburgh for work and they sent me a ticket with fly. I should just said no. <laughs> I, did, I, I thought I never flew fly B before. I was like, listen, let me just try. I can't it out. take small planes. Like I cannot. At least, at least you walked there, and you know when you stand up and you're literally just about. Yeah. The plane is just a little bit higher than you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's claustrophobic you, as hell. And I said, it's 40, 30, 40 minutes. I'm good. Nah, best flight, best flight I ever took. Ever, domestic flight. Yeah, it was. Um, I can't remember the name. I like United Airlines, United, one of the United flights. Were, yeah. But then it was like a proper Boeing, like 474, something like that from yeah. like Delta State to, to, to Lagos. Mm-hmm. I was so happy that day. Because when you're walking the plane, just see a big plane driving from, flying from Lagos. To, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be in a nice seat. It's going to be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And it was good. So that, I enjoyed that flight. But apart from that, some of those flights have been dodgy, man. And, but you can't deal with it because like, you have to fly in a direction. So, so that's the, so, the, so, the, so, you know how you give and take. The, the one thing with me that I've learned is when I was in London, I only flew BA. So, I was always mm. at Terminal 5. So, I've had the best flying experience from mm-hmm. the last six, five, six years. It's mm. just bliss. I can just get up, book a flight, and go by myself somewhere because I just know smooth and easy. Mm. Since I've come to Lagos, I, I literally have been immobile. Because the thought of even going to Maritala Airport, whether it's domestic or international, is so off-putting, yeah, Sorry. that I'm just not in the mood at the moment. Because, like, the airport Wahala alone is just increasing blood pressure. I know that when they see you, they see money. See money. And so, it's like, and it's like, you just, you just don't know what you expect that day. Let yeah, me, you don't know. Let me tell you one time. They closed the checkout on me. I've been tough too. I've been saying, I've been, yeah, but continue. Sorry. They closed the checkout on me, t- like, two hours before the flight took off. <laughs> And I said, what? Two <laughs> hours? So you want me to come to this a- airport three hours before the flight to go so I can check in for one hour? And I said, so this I had COVID, my bag. Yeah. I, had to, I had to literally move everything and put in the gun and must go and take a hand luggage. I even pray my, I even pray my story about him as, as I'm, I'm becoming one of those uncles carrying gun and must go to London. <laughs> The way I was there, also because mm. I didn't, I didn't my stuff, man. I was no way I was going on the way. As in, yeah, but that's sell it, sell it. In but there. one thing you're good about Nigeria is like I, one thing was good that I just gave the guy some change and said, okay, someone's going to come and pick up the bag, mm-hmm. give it to him, and then somebody came up the next day, pick up the bag, and it was fine. 
That's one thing is like sometimes if you, you can drop some stuff on people and then they will sort your stuff out for you. Yeah, you can buy anything in this place. Yeah. yeah. But in London, you have to go and find one baggage claim, it, baggage uh, company, leave it there. They will not tell you the cost from extortionate price. Yeah, they a charge you for everything. They charge you yeah, they charge for mistakes. Yeah. London, London, mistakes cost money. Fine. Don't, don't be making mistakes in London, boy. Very good point. <laughs> mistakes Very cost money. Very good point. But yeah, that was my situation. I was just, I was just, I was like, ah. This Lego's really going to teach you stuff, man. You need to be prepped at all times. But yeah. Amen to that. Anyway, ended there. Yeah. Catch you next week. See you.